All right, is everyone rolling? Good morning, I'm Doug Tobin, Public Information Officer with Pasco County Government. We're assembled here to talk about Pasco County's effort for Tropical Storm Cullen. We have a number of elected officials, County Administrator, uh, Chairman Starkey, Emergency Services Director, all here to speak about Pasco County's efforts during this tropical storm. I'd like to introduce from my right to the left, who's here today, Pasco County Commissioner and Chairman Catherine Starkey, County Administrator Michelle Baker, Emergency Services Director Kevin Guthrie, right behind me, Sheriff Chris Nako, Pasco School Superintendent Kurt Browning, Florida Department of Health, Pasco uh, Mike Napier, uh, Pasco County Fire and Rescue, uh, Sean Whited, and I did uh, uh, leave out Dr. Paula S. O'Neill, Pasco County Clerk and Comptroller. And with that, I'm going to start off with Chairman Catherine Stark. So, um, good, good morning, good afternoon, and um, welcome to our new EOC. Uh, we are here today because we, we have a change in our storm, and it's our main concern and, and interest that our residents are safe. So we have lots of important information for our residents today. We're going to start off with our uh, administrator, Michelle Baker, and move through the constitutional officers. And um, everyone stay safe out there. So. Thank you. So good morning. As uh, Emergency Services Director Kevin Guthrie is about to brief you, the conditions have changed. And our main message today is it is critical that our residents, uh, that our students, and that our business people be safely home with their families and secured by about three o'clock this afternoon as we start to experience tropical storm force winds. So the idea here is to make sure that everybody wraps up their preparations this morning and that they are safely home um, and they are secure inside their homes and off of the roads by about three o'clock today. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Kevin to talk about what's going on with the actual weather conditions. Thank you, Ms. Baker. <clears throat> This morning, uh, we received an updated uh, briefing packet about uh, right at about an hour and a half ago with some updated uh, tropical storm force winds information. And, and as I've been mentioning to everyone on along, we, we knew that we were gonna have a three-phase storm. We were gonna have a flooding event through the rain. We were gonna have a wind event, and then we were gonna have a riverine flooding event. Um, what has happened is the, there's been a, a considerable shift in the winds. We were looking earlier this morning, even as I was driving in this morning at 3 a.m. getting a report from National Weather Service, they were telling me 25 to 30 mile an hour winds. That has significantly changed. We are now looking at sustained tropical for storm force winds inside of Pasco County uh, along our coastline. We're looking at um, 40 mile an hour winds sustained with gusts up to 50. That shift, that 20 mile an hour, 20, 25 mile an hour shift is what's caused us to go into this new protective action. So I want to make sure that message is very clear. We have made that shift based on the latest information. Um, we are still to continue. We are still going to continue our sandbagging operations, which is self-serve, until a, uh, this afternoon when we do pull that, uh, scale that operation back to protect those people from being in tropical storm force winds. So I would look for that to start to shut down somewhere between three and four o'clock this afternoon. But again, we will get those uh, arrival of tropical storm force winds. Um, I'm going to ask everybody to save their questions to the very end, and I'm going to go ahead and transition over to uh, Sheriff Chris Nanko. Good morning. I know during these times, a lot of anxiety, but uh, let us put our citizens at ease in the fact that um, Director Guthrie, emergency operations here within the county, um, all the services, I can tell you, your government is doing an outstanding job right now working together. So I want to give kudos to everybody here at the Emergency Operations Center for the outstanding job and for the partnerships because it's really coming together. and. This storm may change, but I can tell your operations are being flexible uh, to adapt to anything, and we will overcome this. Um, a couple things. Um, over the past several days, as you know, our inmates working with the county, we've set up um, sandbag stations. Our inmates put out there about 9,500 sandbags. Um, I can tell you right now, due to the weather conditions, they'll be going back inside the jail, but as soon as the storm is over, they're going to be back out sandbagging again uh, because we know we'll possibly have another flood event and we want to make sure that our citizens have everything possible to protect themselves and their family. Um, we deployed our equipment to the central part, I mean, to the western part of the county, so we will be prepared to deploy anything necessary to rescue anybody who needs our assistance. Um, also, our personnel, we've shifted personnel hours around, so we will be ready uh, to adjust to the storm. Main things you'll kind of keep hearing over and over again, but they need to be repeated. 
one, stay off these roads um, when you can. When you get home, stay at home. Uh, don't try to go out there. If you have a car and you see standing water, don't try to drive through it. All you're going to do is put yourself at risk and put first responders at risk going out there trying to rescue you. Um, the one thing too is, please, for parents, we know the kids are going, to go, going home, and as the storm is going on, please have them stay inside. Uh, with these winds, with the debris flying around, we don't want anybody to get hurt. The other thing too is with this water, please tell these kids not to go in the water. They will be um, rapids going out there, there will be tides, and we don't want kids getting caught up in an undercurrent, even if it's a stream or a pond, who knows what's going out there, what debris may take them under. So we're warning everybody, stay out of the water. Um, another thing too is for boaters, I mean it's common sense, but we have to repeat it, don't go out in the Gulf today. Um, people are trying to take off in small aircraft, when these winds are kicking, don't take off. All you're doing is putting yourself and others at risk. Um, for those that have, are staying in their house and they've had flooded conditions before, please notify loved ones of where you are. Um, if first responders have to go out there, we want to know and we know the family members will be able to assist us. So tell your loved ones, if you're going out of the area, you've started driving already, call your loved ones because we don't want us to be going house to house looking for you if you're out of the area. The other one too is um, after the storm and tonight, I'm going to start with tonight. Um, our deputies are going to be out, we're going to be out in force, we're going to have numbers out there. Um, if you are a looter and you're going to try to take advantage of the situation, I promise you there's plenty of room at the Land Lakes Jail. You will be arrested, you will be taken to jail, and possibly tomorrow you will be sandbagging for others tomorrow. <laughs> um, the other side of it also is for unlicensed contractors. Um, after the storm breaks with a lot of wind, as you heard uh, Director Guthrie talk about, there could be a lot of damage. So, you know, we have a partnership with the county working to stop these unlicensed contractors. It's a great partnership and it will be in effect even more so tomorrow as the storm breaks. And, you know, after the storm, people try to take advantage, unfortunately. Make sure if you have damage to your home, you get a licensed contractor. So with that, I know there's a lot of questions and I go back to um, Superintendent Browning, who's also had a very busy day today. Say the least, Sheriff. Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, uh, student safety uh, is my concern and that of the school districts. Um, as uh, Dr. Guthrie has said uh, earlier in his remarks, that uh, as of late last night, uh, the districts in the Tampa area, including Pasco, uh, have planned to stay open today, and we opened as usual. Uh, then with the changing weather uh, conditions, uh, unfortunately, uh, we had to take some pretty drastic measures today to address uh, student safety and getting our students home. Uh, what we've done uh, is we have three tiers of uh, school uh, transportation um, and we are uh, reversing that uh, tier uh, as we speak at 1030. Uh, we started uh, releasing high schools uh, and a few middle schools uh, and then beginning at 1130 we'll be releasing a few high schools, mainly middle schools and a handful of elementary schools. And then at 12.30, uh, we will be uh, releasing all elementary schools that are remaining to be released. Um, with the wind uh, increasing uh, and uh, being uh, pretty severe, uh, beginning around 3 o'clock, that is when most of our buses are on the highways. Uh, and we are prohibited from, uh, uh, and even good common sense will tell you, you don't need to have a school bus on a road with uh, uh, 40 mile an hour winds, uh, much less gusting winds. So student safety is very important to us. Um, we realize that this is a huge inconvenience to moms and dads. We get that. Uh, uh, but with the data we had, we thought that uh, it was the best thing to do is to open schools today. Uh, and as I always have to say, is uh, no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> um, but uh, we are uh, letting parents know now that if they want to come to schools and pick up their children, they may do so. Uh, and all schools have been notified. We've gotten a call out to all of our parents uh, where we have contact information for them in our uh, School Connect system to let them know of the status of uh, schools today. Uh, so um, uh, this is changing uh, literally by the minute. Uh, we've uh, had to make sure uh, and step down all the food nutrition folks. We had to amp up our transportation folks to accommodate this. Um, and uh, then also the district will be closing itself uh, as soon as the last child is delivered, which we think will be no later than 2 o'clock this afternoon. So the district will be closing uh, so our employees can go home and be safe with their families as well. So at this time, I'll uh, turn it over to Dr. O'Neill, our clerk and comptroller. Thank you, sir. Okay, we have a full room of jurors ready to serve. 
So uh, the judges are now choosing their jurors, and that is to be completed by noon. We are planning for the courthouse to close at noon. If you have a court date that's after noon today, it will be reset according to our chief, our um, administrative judge, Sean Crane. Also, advisories were moved from 1 p.m. to 11 a.m. this morning, and so we anticipate everything being finished by noon today. Hi, I'm Mike Napier, Florida Department of Health, Pasco County, and uh, I want to take up uh, what the sheriff mentioned about the flood waters and staying out of the waters. Those waters also have critters in them, snakes, animals that are trying to get out of the flood waters like many of us, so those are uh, another hazard for your children. Also with uh, septic systems and wells that may be flooded, you want to be sure that uh, if your, flood, your well is flooded, assume that it may be polluted and that use bottled water or other means to drink water. If you're on a septic system, use it sparingly if it's flooded. Uh, we also want to remind people as power may go out, that carbon monoxide poisoning from uh, using your generators may be a hazard. Make sure that they're ventilated. And um, lastly, the um, Florida Department of Health uh, will also be closing their offices at noon today. That is our WIC and our clinical services at our locations. They will be closing at noon. We'll be calling our clients and rescheduling those appointments. Thank you. <coughs> I'm Sean Wyatt from Fire Rescue. Uh, again, Fire Rescue is just putting out the message of out there, just like Sheriff Naco. Please, if you're out there driving and you see some heavy or deep water, please don't drive through it. That does put our responders at risk. Um, as uh, the winds increase today, uh, we have a standing policy with our department and all of our city fire departments in the Pasco County area that 40 miles and higher sustained, our vehicles will only leave the station on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, if that determination is made and you call us for 911, we will get to you. It just will be a delayed response and it's gonna be on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, we have uh, increased our coverage out in the field. We've brought in some uh, firefighters and paramedics on overtime and we're snapping some auxiliary vehicles and we'll be ready for whatever uh, happens. We'll be ready. We'll go ahead and ask questions. Uh, for the last I want to say one just thing. Kevin to wrap up a couple yeah. of little things. And, and I drove around last night. I want our residents to know our pumps are placed. Um, in some places, we have two pumps ready to go. And uh, we've done as much preparatory work as we can. Can you, can you speak uh -huh. to the pumping? Yes, ma'am. Again, I'll, I'll do a, a emergency management wrap up on this. So again, picking up where uh, Commissioner Starkey left off with the pumps. We have, uh, we, we started this preparation on the county government side back on uh, Friday. And what we did is we started going out to our known lo suspect locations that we, we have continual flooding problems at and we started pumping those areas down. So uh, by Saturday, or actually by late Friday afternoon, we were already to the point of pumping mud. So we, uh, we did not need to pump water anymore. Uh, we stopped that operation, but we did pre-stage equipment all over the county in our known suspect areas so that we could be, so that our response after the fact would be much more uh, appropriate, much more effective, swift, if you will. So the pumps are pre-staged. We did all of the uh, necessary uh, cleanings and necessary pumping down of those reservoirs and um, uh, retention ponds uh, back on Friday. So we are prepared for this storm. I want to ensure that everybody knows we are prepared. I've been saying all along, we are going to experience a flooding event in our known flooding areas, but we have done everything that we can on the county side um, and in preparation. Uh, couple of things that I want to mention to you real quick like closing of county government we will be closing county government offices at noon today so Pasco County government offices will close at noon we're encouraging individuals that if they have a non life threatening need for anything related to the storm that they need to call our customer service center that customer service center is going to be 727 847 2411. I'm going to repeat that again. It's 727 847 2411. Those are the non life threatening storm related issues. If they have a storm related life threatening emergency, please call 911. As the emergency services director, the 911 center does fall underneath me. I have, I have five additional staff on duty right now, and we will have five additional staff on duty overnight to handle 911 calls and things of that nature. So again, we're prepared. We want to make sure that all of our residents know to go and utilize the MyPasco app. 
All of the information that we're putting out here today uh, will be available on my Pasco app. And um, with that being said, I want to remind people, uh, as everybody up here has said, this is not the time to be out on the streets and walking around, driving around. Please stay at home. Do not drive. One of the, in last year's flooding event, one of the uh, main types of calls that the sheriff's office and fire rescue had to respond to was people driving through water and becoming stranded in it. And that is a completely preventable call. And I encourage people, you know, the, the, the statement has always been, turn around, do not drown. There is a lot of truth to that, folks. Do not drive through water that you cannot see the pavement in. Also, you do not know what's going on below the pavement, all right? So again, do not drive through water. We're asking you, do not do that. With that being said, I'll facilitate the questions um, and we'll have the most appropriate individual come up and uh, answer. Let's, let's go ahead from this side of the room. Any questions? I have one. Um, so with like schools being, you guys are saying that the storm changed, but the um, tropical storm warnings in this area has been in effect since 11 yesterday. So what exactly changed? So again, the national weather, the we, we have a tropical storm warning in effect all the way down to Inglewood, Florida and all the way around the Big Bend. So the tropical storm warning has been there. The information that we've been given by the National Weather Service is that we are in a tropical storm warning, which means that conditions are favorable that we will receive those winds within the next 24 to 36 hours. However, they narrow those cones down and tell us at your level, you will be receiving between 20 and 25 with gusts to 30 or 40. That's the information that we received from National Weather Service because again, it appeared this storm was going to be going into the Apalachicola Bay. It's now taken a slight shift back to the south, which has increased the winds here. And again, the information we made, or the decisions that were made based on last night's information were that we were gonna receive 20 to 25 mile an hour sustained winds. That has increased over 20 to 25 miles an hour. And it's because of that situation that we are now moving back to this posture, or we're moving to this posture. All right. Any other questions in the middle? Are you simply asking people to stay off the streets at three, and will that ever become mandatory? So what we're doing at this point in time is we are we are putting in motion to get our kids taken care of in our schools. We're pushing to our uh, government offices to get the to get those folks home by three o'clock. We know that we will start receiving those tropical storm force winds along the coast at around three o'clock, somewhere between three and four, so we're having everybody get off the road by three. We're encouraging, we're leading by example. You know, we've been saying this all the time. Your government is prepared, we want you to prepare. We are leading by example, we are gonna get off the streets and we're going to get to our homes and we are gonna lock down and we are gonna stay there. So again, that's exactly what we're asking for is, we want you to stay off the streets by three o'clock. Now, we are not ordering people, we're not, the sheriff's not gonna go out and arrest people for being on the street at three o'clock. This is not like a curfew or any, any of that. We're just asking people to exercise common sense, stay off the roads, do not drive through water, do not have your children playing in the water, and so on. Kevin, the communications director for the schools is gonna make just a quick comment. Uh, and this is Linda Cobb, Pasco School District. C-O-B-B-E. Um, we just want to appeal to employers to let their employees who have children in school in Pasco County Schools leave work to go get their children or to meet them at home because we are dismissing them early. Okay. Any other questions from this side of the room that we didn't get to? Any other questions from the press? Anything in particular you want to say to the people? You know, there are people, so many people who live in these flood prone areas. Is there anything more specific you want to say to those people in particular? Again. People know their community better than we do. If we're gonna get, if their community is showing that they're getting two inches, four inches, six inches, eight inches of rain, they they know their community. Take the precautions they need. You can still get sandbags. We've given out over 20,000 sandbags now. We still have those self-service locations. We ask you to go ahead and get there now, get the sandbags loaded. We do not have inmate labor as a chief, or I'm sorry, Sheriff Naco mentioned. So you're going to have to do it yourself, but now is the time. This is, we're, we're almost at the ninth hour, but we're gonna be wrapping up operations here very shortly by most likely three o'clock. Get there, get your sandbags, get back to your home and sandbag your location again. You do not need to build, as we've been saying, you do not need to build sandbags all the way around your home, just around the intrusion areas. 
your front door, your back door, sliding doors, garage doors, things of that nature. Any uh, just advice for people um, as far as the winds are concerned, people who live in structures that maybe aren't as secure as others? Again, in, in, that case, in those cases, uh, we are asking people to pull uh, stuff that they have on their property back and secure it. We want that debris uh, secured. Again, that's a homeowner situation. So they know their homeowner, they know their property. Secure all of that, that, that loose debris, yard, um, you know, barbecue grills and, and lawn chairs and uh, perhaps toys and things that the kids have out in the yard. Get that stuff collected, get it secured so that it doesn't become a projectile. So that's, that's the message we're asking the homeowners to do at this point in time. And again, if people, get, if people get into a situation where they feel like they're becoming a victim of the, situa of, the, of the storm, they need to call us. We're going to respond to them. We are going to assist them. We are going to respond to our customers. Um, so we need to know that. People need to call us. Again, if it's life-threatening, it's 911. If it's the uh, non-emergency situation, it is uh, again, 727-847-2411, and we will get them assistance. Uh, I, I, again, I reiterate what uh, Chief Whitted said. We, w if they wait till 50 mile an hour winds, that's not a good time to wait. They need to they need to communicate with us well in advance if they're gonna if they need assistance. All right. Chairman Starkey, you want to make a final comment? Well, um, we just. Uh, hope that our residents will listen listen to the warnings from our constitutionals and our staff. An appropriate action here and we, we hope that you will too. We want you all to be safe and um, please call us if you need us. We're here for you, but stay safe, stay home. Any constitutionals have anything else that you need to get out there? Thank you. Got everything? Any other final questions? All right, thank you everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.